Abante, you get the floor jack, Hosam, go get the dolly, man. Hurry up, we don't want Brian to know. Well, they brought in this HHR, said it's pulling to the right, you think? Well, we got a big issue down there. We're gonna have to do some diagnostics. We're gonna have to do some repairs. This is gonna be a big job, but I wanna get it down into the shop, into Tech Garage. Today, we'll check out this one. We'll see if Brian notices really how bad it's pulling to the right. Are you kidding me? John, I thought you said this thing had a slight pull to the right. Brian, I'll tell you what, don't oh. go too hard on me. I actually drove it in here. No, not really. I had a little help pushing, but there's a dolly under there. And I look, there's only a couple things broken. We can fix it. This is catastrophic damage. I mean, there's evidence all around, right? There's so much to consider here. I mean, I can see where the CV boot's broken now. There's grease slung all over underneath. It's minor. The strut, the spindle, the tie rod end, probably the whole rack. We gotta get this thing up in the air and get a real evaluation. You know what, Rock Auto will hook us up. Parts, no problem, we'll do an evaluation, we'll see what it looks like. I'm gonna take a look at what it's supposed to look like. Well, we have a McPherson strut suspension system, similar to our HHR that we can look at right here in the wide open and a demo, this is pretty cool. Check it out, we'll start down here on the bottom. Now this blue piece going across, that's the control arm, that supports everything that's going on, so we gotta make sure we inspect that control arm. Moving up, the drive axle. Now Brian already mentioned that thing separated, we'll have to take a good look at that as well. That's what's driving the actual hub bearing and everything out here, our brake and assembly. And then we go up to the spindle, the black part right here is the actual spindle. He even looked at that and said that was cracked. So we're gonna have an issue there as well. Then we come up to the strut assembly and it goes all the way up and it mounts to the upper fender, actually the tower of the car. Now this is hugely important because we gotta make sure that's all structurally sound because we don't want any problems there because that's gonna go beyond our repairabilities once we start getting into structural damage. Coming to the backside here, you can see the tie rod that comes out here from the rack and pinion. It attaches to the spindle as well. Now this is huge because we want to make sure the steering geometry is all intact and everything's going good. And then right over here is actually the frame. Once again, all that has to be intact. The vehicle geometry, the steering, the alignment, we're going to keep talking about that, has to track, it has to go proper. Once the frame's bent or anything like that, we're out. Now here it is over here on the graphic. I'm going to switch it to you. This is actually our HHR. So you can see it right here, you're looking at the graphic itself. This is the car. So here's that lower control arm I mentioned going across the bottom. We work our way up to the rack and pinion assembly coming all the way out. And then you got your tie rod end connecting here to the spindle right here. This is what's going up. Brian mentioned that's broken. Attaching to the strut, very, very similar. All the way up to the tower of the car. And then over here, we actually have a link. We gotta check that too as well because that link's connected to the sway bar going across and all that has to be intact. The frame and stuff, once again, we'll do a visual inspection. Hopefully that's all intact and we can salvage our HHR. Yep, that's the actual shaft. A mild pull to the right, huh, John? All right, we gotta do a little bit of inspection down here to understand exactly what we're signing up for. You wanna check the welds on the subframe. There's no cracks, nothing obvious here in terms of damage this side, or you know, you can compare it to the other side and see how that all shapes up. But this looks pretty good. The control arm mount, there's no bending, no breaking there. I feel like it's gonna be worthy of a repair, but we gotta document this and take some copious notes because there's frankly a lot to do here. So John, I'm gonna get this wheel off so we can get a better look. All right, Brian, copious, I don't even know what that means, but I'm gonna take the notes the best that I can. I don't spell too well. So go ahead, get that wheel axle off. Axle shaft for sure, buddy. The axle shaft, I got the axle shaft. I can see that's split. You actually got the lower control arm. We'll go ahead and get that too. Like you said, we might as well replace the strut. Spindle's broken half. I got spindle. And yeah. then, man, take a look at that tie rod end. Oh, cool. yeah, tie rod end. If you like horseshoes, this is, this is going to be for you. I think that's going to be the whole rack. There has to be damage up in that rack tray. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, and it lo looks like it's secure, so we didn't do any damage to the frame. I know you said that's important, that vehicle geometry. We keep talking about that. Yeah, man. We're going to have to line this thing. It's going to have to work. I don't care. We need it safe, no matter what the car value is. You Safety's key. You got strut. Key. You got knuckle. Right, got How it. about sway bar link? Ooh, good one, yep. sway bar link. Gotta get that. All right. The brake lines actually look pretty good. There's no brakes there all right. and the ABS sensor. I feel pretty good about all that. So we got some work to do to get this all pulled off and start to get that rack ready to come out. All right, I think I can work off of this. I'm gonna head out to the rockauto.com storeroom and get these parts. You stick around. We're gonna go ahead and tear apart this suspension system. You don't wanna miss it. We'll be back with more Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com.
Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com, is brought to you by Bumper Bib, the best in bumper protection. Danmar Equipment, now you see it, now you don't. And by rockauto.com, all the parts your car will ever need. Welcome back to Tech Garage, brought to you by rockauto.com. Well, we've got the three strut mounting bolts nuts removed from the top. To give this a little encouragement. Get this guy down and out. Tell you what, pulling slightly to the right, John, really? So, so far, we're just about done on the disassembly. We've got the tie rod end removed. Not hard to do. Hit that with the impact gun. Luckily, nothing spun. Got it down and out of the way. We move down to the sway bar link. Now, we had to crimp that a little bit, put some pressure on it to get that nut off. It pulled right off. Then we had to get that ABS sensor unplugged and the caliper removed. We got the caliper with our old bungee cord up and out of the way, then the caliper mounting bracket, and ultimately moved down to the strut bolts. Now remember, when you're removing your strut bolts, put the nut back on if you've got to encourage it with a ball peen, like I had to do here. Tap the nut, work those loose, got upper and lower ones out. Then we had a wrestling match with the lower control arm. Not terrible access, really, at all. Once we got that thing down and away, we had to pry it, work it a little bit with a pry bar, got it removed and down to the ground. You're going to see how it compares to a new one later on. Then we just got the strut out, and now we're finally ready to get this plunge joint removed. Now these typically take a little bit of encouragement. This one is separated into damage. Get that loose, and there you go. Comes right off in your hand. And you can see where the separation has happened here. So clearly, that guy's got to get replaced. Finally, you have to get the steering rack out. Now, there's two bolts that come down through the top. They're 18 millimeter. Not that hard to get to with everything removed. I'm going to get to the, the one on the other side. I've got the wheel off, but I'm going to start here. And then, of course, we just have the steering knuckle to remove. And this joker's coming out. And I'm going to take it over to John, see if he wants to play a game of horseshoes here pulling slightly to the right. John, why don't you tell us how steering systems actually work? Well, you may have two types of steering systems, power or manual, they're gonna be the same. One of them is a parallelogram steering system and the other is a rack and pinion. Let's take a look at both of them. This one right here, well, this is a parallelogram and it actually looks like a parallelogram from under the car. You can see it all starts right here at a gearbox. It's driven down here by a pitman arm over to a center link and then the two tie rod ends go back out and that's what attaches to the spindle and turns your car. Now, the gearbox is pretty cool because I got a cutaway here you can see inside. And what's happening with a gearbox is we're actually driving and right here through the worm gear and this is neat because this ball nut has these little things in here and as I turn it you can see those ball bearings go around that's actually driving this sector shaft which is turning your linear motion into rotational motion down at the tires that's really neat if it's power steering you'll have fluid on both sides it'll help you move to the left or to the right now rack and pinions just like our HHR you got a rack and you got a pinion this is the rack that goes across here and then this part is the pinion located right inside of here are spool valves that actually directs the fluid to either one side of these chambers to help you with power steering and I can turn it you can watch that one in action go into the right and to the left bam pinion contacts the rack and that's how we're moving our HHR that's how it actually works this is the new one now rack and pinions have come a long way we got a couple of different looks at it right here we can actually see the different rack and pinions now we start out right here on the top. You can pull up this graphic right here. It starts to get with electric assist. The electric assist is located at the column. The next graphic over here, it's right up at top here. Down on the bottom, you can see it's electrohydraulic motor. And then we went to full power assist right here with electric right there with all electric, no electrohydraulic whatsoever. Brian, you got the rack off, man. Wait a minute. Sure do. You sweating a bit? <laughs> yeah. Let me yeah. tell you, pulling slightly to the right. Yeah, exactly. Unbelievable. I worked you on that mess. You did, buddy. This is cool because you can see identification here. You can look at it just like you said. Make sure you transfer the rubber bushings. Make sure they're good. Everything's good. Our rockauto.com is perfect. Mm -hmm. Now we want to do a couple things. We just want to get the alignment close, man. Yeah, let's get it close. And I think at the end of the project, we can do, do kind of a driveway alignment so we get it close enough to take it for a professional alignment at a shop. So yeah. a few measurements are paramount yeah. here. Let's move that one out of the way. Okay. So all I'm going to do really is just pull a tape over here. It's about three-quarter inches. You can count the threads. You can, you can put white out 
on there. Like you said, you're just getting it close. We don't really care. Got we it. just want to get it close enough. Yes, it's going to need an alignment. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and separate this nut right here. And when I separate this nut, this is going to break it loose. Yep. And then once it breaks it loose, then I can come over, rotate it, take it off. Guess what I'm going to do? Switch it over, put it on that rack where exactly three quarters of an inch. Yep. That affects toe. That's going to get us in the ballpark. Get us in the ballpark. And I'm five eighths over here. So I'm going to go write that down so we don't lose track of it. Another way, if you want to index it with a marker, sharpie, piece of chalk, whatever, you can also count the revolutions off. Some people like to do both. Then we can pull that end off and play horseshoes later. Oh, perfect. Yeah. I'll tell you what, this thing actually justifies a second show, man. We got to get the rack back in there. Yep. And then the cool part is we'll rebuild that whole suspension. Brian, I'm driving Project M&M for last season. I'm thinking this HHR is just your style, man. Yeah, that's what I like to think. It's a hot rod waiting to happen. Yeah, well, you have to yeah. wait till next week to finish the HHR, but stick around because we're going to get into lighting systems with Garage Ed. It's getting brighter right after this break. More Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com. Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com. Well, if we haven't brightened up your day already, we're going to right now in the Garage Ed segment. Why is that? Well, we're talking about lighting and lighting's a safety issue. And there's been a huge evolution of lighting throughout the years. Let's start out all the way over here on the basics. Everybody's familiar with most of these lights. This is a sealed beam headlight, man. Everything's enclosed in it, caption in the car, plugs on the back, turn it on, incandescent light. Then we stepped up to composite headlamps. Now, composite headlamps, this is the one that's actually off a of Project M&M last year. We upgraded created that to LEDs. If you see the back of this, flip it around, you can actually see the bulb comes out right there. Now, this bulb is a halogen bulb. A couple of tips for you there. You don't want to go touching this bulb. Now, if you buy them from Rock Auto or you buy some good bulbs, a lot of times you can get some gloves that go with it. Or when you put them on there, make sure you're not touching that bulb because the oil gets attracted to it and it shortens the life of the bulb. So halogens, another way to go. Now, you've seen these before in the rear sockets. They come in amber or clear. Once again, a halogen bulb or an upgrade set with a little more power, a little more lumens, a little more light. Now we stepped up to HID, High Intensity Discharge Headlamps. This is pretty cool. Ordered this one off Rock Auto as well. This actually come from the factory in the car, but the cool part is you can see this ginormous arc tube right there. So what happens is you get this massive voltage spike, about 600 volts. It arcs through there, lights that xenon gas, and that thing brightens that beautiful white light that everybody likes. And then it goes back, doesn't burn much voltage at all. It's pretty cool. Then we step it up even further to LED lighting. Now I ordered this as well. This is an LED bulb. This is for off-road lighting or heavy tractor use and stuff like that. But this light's super bright and I'll show you why. Check out our board here. Basic lighting circuit. Turn it on, blinks to the left, blinks to the right. Nothing new here. Cool part is though, we talked about amps in a few series backs. Well, if you look right here and I hold that, can actually see that flashing. Remember that amp draw? Heat, no heat. Heat, no heat. Exactly what's happening. It's open and closing like a little circuit breaker. Good tip for you as well if you're trailering or you're putting some extra lighting on there. The hazard is actually a heavy duty one because we're flashing all the lights so you can upgrade. Make sure you get your good flasher. Now, all that stuff's gone today. Actually have a body control module. Well, what that's all about? Well, when I turn on the signals, all I do is I tell him I want the turn signals and he runs it. You get that clicking? Well, that clicking's no more than that. It's coming over your radio speakers, but it's still clicking so you know your lights are on. Now, I want to show you the difference between this LED an incandescent, so watch your eyes. Here we go. Bam, huge difference. A lot less amp draw, a lot longer life. Now, Tom from Rock Auto, he has a bunch of choices when it comes to lighting and safety issues. Let's join him. Now, Tom, you saw the lighting system on the board we looked at. Now, I'm familiar with going on Rock Auto and finding lighting, but I mean, there's flashers, there's body control modules. How would I go on Rock Auto and find it if I really don't know where to look? Well, we have the main categories. We have an electrical category, but if you're not sure where to look, we have a search box. Like I can just type in flasher and it, it, it uh, gives me some suggestions and I can go right down to flashers and, and there they are. F flashers, you mentioned get a high quality flasher. It, it's super important. I, I bought a 71 Ford LTD a few years back and the previous owner had, had taken it to a shop and they were trying to fix the uh, turn signals. They pulled the steering wheel, replaced the turn signal switch, replaced the flasher, replaced a bunch of stuff and, and he had basically given up. It still wouldn't work. So. I got it and, and I pulled out their flasher and it, it was the cheapest thing I ever saw, like, like a 29 cent flasher I'm guessing, wow. and, and I put a, a Rock Auto $5 flasher in and it fixed everything. 
Yeah, it's amazing what the electrical components can do. And I was looking on there earlier, and for my co-host, Brian Gregory, I saw one that's loud. That's good, he's getting a little <laughs> older. That would help him out as well. Yeah, if, it, if it's a work truck or a convertible where you have a lot of road noise, you, you can hear, hear that your tur turn signal's on. Yeah, a convertible, you may not be able to see the indicator on the dash is flashing. So yeah, I get that loud flasher. And what about lighting? I mean, everybody's upgrading today. I mean, there's no doubt about it. These things don't put out much light. Today they do. What, what do you have for us? It, it's an exciting time, no matter what age your vehicle is, you can get uh, uh, new complete headlamp assemblies that are, have LEDs that, and change the styling, plus uh, illuminate better. You can get uh, new bulbs for almost anywhere in your car, the, the courtesy lights inside, the uh, license plate light, the, the turn signals, the brake lights, you can get LEDs for those. and. Especially like instrument cluster lights where you don't want to replace your instrument cluster bulbs more than once because you have to disassemble a bunch of stuff. Right. You put in the LEDs in there, they last longer, they use less electricity, they, they don't generate as much heat, so they're not going to be uh, damaging the plastic Absolutely. in there. and They withstand vibration better, so you just do the job once. And you can choose different colors. They have blue and red. and Absolutely, yeah, and they just cool look good. Colors. You get the halos and everything. Well, you stick around because there's plenty more Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com as soon as we return. Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com, is brought to you by Tire Stickers. Creative, dynamic expression. Classic Dash. Add a touch of class to your dash. And by rockauto.com. All the parts your car will ever need. Welcome back to Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Well, it's the time of our show where we go to the video question of the week. And Brian, this guy sounds like he's been around cars a little bit. This one may be a challenge. Roll it. Hey, John and Brian, I scanned my BMW and found a lean code, PO171. I've already smoke tested the lines, the vacuum lines, the intake, and I found nothing. What should I do next? Well, a lean code, there's always a singular starting point for a lean code. We always, always, always replace the fuel filter first. And on our Firebird, it's 75,000 miles old, a lot of wear and tear through that filter. I've got it halfway disassembled. We're going to go ahead and switch that out, John. Yeah, what's your steps? Tell me about the steps. All right, well, first thing you got to do here is I put a rag up in there. I've got the clamp loose. Use a tubing wrench wherever you possibly can. Hold on, what wrench are you going to use? What hand are you going to use? I'm going to use my left hand. All right, come here. This think, makes me just a little bit nervous. Yeah, you're going to thank me this What are you doing? I'll tell you what. When that gas gets down in your armpit, you're going to thank me that's there. Ah, wise, <laughs> wise. So with the tubing wrench, you can come up here. you got to just crack these loose. It usually doesn't take much. That's why you put a rag. You want no metal-to-metal -metal contact. I already have the back connector out. That can be one you wrestle with a little bit. There's a tool. I was able to crimp this with my fingers and get it out. And I've bent it up just to try to keep the dripping to a minimum. And just back this out, and we've got the old fuel filter right there. There you go. Now, Joey, you know what? That PO171, it's awesome. You're in there using a rockauto.com scan tool. You got the code. You said you smoked the system. EVAP vacuum lines, man, you're getting too smart for your own good. Let's go back to the basics always. It's about the fuel filter, lean codes. Lean codes, more air than fuel. I actually got one right here. You can actually see this one. Now, this one is a very dirty one that's all grummed up, and I'll put it right next to the good one that's not gummed up. Look at the difference of those two jokers. Now, what's going on there? Well, I got a cool demo right here to show you. I actually got a fuel pump hooked up, and I got a meter in series because I want to look at the amps going on with the fuel pump. So when I run that thing, Joey, what's going on? You got good fuel flow right there. Well, if I start restricting this filter, number one, less fuel, more air, there's your lean code. Make sure you got that 14.7 to one, that good fuel mixture. Not only that a problem, take a look at this meter. I'll start cutting it off, man. I'm up to four amps. Take away the fuel filter, I'm at three amps. Talk about burning up a fuel pump prematurely. This is gonna do it every time. So work on that fuel filter, get the basics down. Rich codes, air filter, let's stick with the basics, not go to these big smoke tests right off the bat. You How got you coming that, over there, buddy? It's coming along nicely. You wanna get this clamp seated up in there. You wanna use either a brass tip screwdriver, any kind of plastic to seat that in there so there's no metal to metal contact anywhere for obvious reasons. Bring this feed line back down. Yeah, see yep. that? Oh, All of a sudden, really? you're looking pretty smart. <laughs> Might not be good looking, but you are smart. Yeah, see that right? All right, and then you got to feel and hear the click here. There you All go. All right. All right. 
No gas in the arm. Just armpit. about there. You're Just a little go. bit. Another good tip, you know, we depressurize the fuel system. That's huge. You have to go to the fuel pump fuse or a relay, something along the lines. Unplug that, depressurize the system so when you first crack the line, you don't get that spray and fuel all over there. Brian had some great tips. Fuel spark, not good. Just make sure you do it safely. Mm. Hey, what about the pulling HHR? I'll tell you what, <laughs> slightly pulling to the right. What in the world? That was actually a pretty fun project, though. We saw immediate progress in the disassembly assembly of everything. Confirm there's no structural damage. Feel really good about spending some money to get that thing repaired and getting it back on the road. Yeah, all we got to do is get the rack and pinion in, you know, we'll hold it till next show. We'll put the all back together. It's going to be in good shape. It's probably worth it. The cost analysis so far, we're probably right on track. Yeah, I like it. Tell you what, we love hearing from you guys and your ideas. Join us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, and we look forward to seeing you next week right here on Tech Garage, brought to you by rockauto.com. Production assistance for Tech Garage is provided by Chipola College, located in Mariana, Florida. Founded in 1947, Chipola was ranked recently as one of the top three community colleges in the United States.